Welcome back. Have you ever dreamed of just ditching your lawnmower, starting your garden from scratch and going completely low maintenance? Well, Carson is about to make that a reality for someone special. Check it out. All right, so here's my latest project. I'm about to tackle this front yard makeover. Now, there's a few things you need to know. First of all, this client is a very special client who does not want anything to do with the camera. It's my mother-in-law, which that alone is a lot of pressure on me. But the other thing that she wants to do is she wants to remove all of the grass. She wants this a low maintenance front yard makeover. But the challenge is this is a brand new build. There's not a lot of character here. So I'm gonna have to create a space that's completely new. I'm not gonna be able to pull from any other inspiration and I'm actually gonna have to design it to meet my mother-in-law's standards. Have to wait and see how this one turns out. All right, we're gonna give you a progress update, and no, not just on my farmer's stand. We're talking about the space here. As you can see, almost all the grass has been ripped out. I've pre-dug a lot of the holes, but most importantly, you can see the cardboard. Now, I have a technique that I really like to use in these types of gardens. I put down cardboard instead of landscape fabric to actually stop the weeds, to kill them off. It'll actually keep this space weed-free for about three years. Down the center, we actually have a big section of cardboard. That's gonna be a dried riverbed. I'm gonna add driftwood, some really cool trees around it, but it creates something visual. It gives it shape to the space. But most importantly, it creates a low maintenance focal point that everybody's gonna enjoy all season long. All right, after three very hot and dry days with a little blood sweating, okay, maybe a few tears, I have actually finished my mother-in-law's front yard space. Now, remember what it looked like before. Definitely looks different now. Here is the new garden. Huge transformation, one that I am very proud of. There's a few items here that I definitely want to point out to you. So come on this way. The first thing is the dry riverbed. Now a lot of the neighbors have asked if we're actually putting in a water feature, but the answer is no. It is a dry riverbed because I want it low maintenance. The key to making a really good dry riverbed is to use a combination of different stones like I mentioned before. And as you can see with that big beautiful piece of driftwood in there, it really highlights, it creates a focal point. Another thing I want to show you, and come on, is there's some empty gaps. I find that when you're doing a makeover, don't put everything in all at once. Give yourself some time to breathe, to look at the elements that you want to add to it. These types of gardens should take two or three years to really add and enhance, but most importantly, to identify when there's no blooms happening so that you can go to the garden center and pick out plants that are blooming at that time to put in the garden. Now for me, a bench at the front just makes the house feel more welcoming. Even though it's in the garden like that, it adds lots of space for people to actually sit down. It's perfect for creating that atmosphere and that environment. Behind the bench, we've got large grasses. Now those grasses will fill up and encase and close that entire area, so it's gonna feel cozy and inviting at the same time. And the best part of this entire makeover, my mother-in-law absolutely loves it, or at least she says she does. So I'm officially in the good books. I hope you liked it too. Oh, Carson, your mother-in-law must absolutely love her new garden. I know she's already in love with you, but if it's possible, she probably loves you even more. So give us a play-by-play -play on how you replaced the grass and what is the trick to using cardboard? Well, it's funny, I never realized that cardboard would be, you know, my signature piece, but every single neighbor in that neighborhood <laughs> who watched this makeover asked about the cardboard. So you're not alone on that one. I like using cardboard instead of landscape fabric because cardboard naturally breaks down and it works even better in my opinion. Now think about cardboard when it gets wet. It's sticky, it's malleable, it melds to whatever you put it on top of, especially on rainy situations or in the rain. Uh, I love it because it actually blocks the plants from getting sunlight, effectively killing off all the plants, the grass, the sod, the weeds underneath it. And then any plants that you actually want in your garden, you put the cardboard around it to allow them to have access to the sun. Works really effectively and it's recyclable. Lasts about three years. The other thing to consider about cardboard is even cardboard like this that has lots of dye on it. It will actually break down. This is soy-based dye. Soy-based dye was brought into North America several years ago, so you can know that this is safe in your outdoor spaces. Good to use. The one thing you have to remember when using cardboard, though, doesn't matter how big the sheet is, you have to take off all the tape. The tape will not break down. You gotta remove it from all the boxes. So before you put it down, take off the tape, cover it in mulch or cover it in stones, and you're good to go.
Amazing. Okay, now your mother-in-law wanted a low-maintenance space, uh, and you gave her a river bed as a focal point. So let's talk about how that came together. Yeah, river beds are not as easy as it sounds. I mean, if you just go out and dump gravel in a spot and call it a dry river bed, you're not actually going to be able to create the aesthetic that you're looking for. So there's a few things to remember. When I'm doing a dry river bed, I put the cardboard down first. Remember, you don't want weeds growing through the grass. Second, I use three different types of stones, and I'm going to pull them up for you. The first, extra large. Put extra large stones around the outside to create your shape. That will actually define the bed. Next, you want to go to the three to six inch size. You mix this in amongst the big stones and a little bit in the middle. And then finally, you're going to finish it with the smaller gravel. This is what's really going to create that aesthetic that you're looking for. And don't forget to add the details, because if you really want to set it over the top, get a great piece of driftwood, something like this one. Detail, detail, detail. It gives movement in the space and looks fantastic all year long. Carson, that looks amazing. Uh, honestly, she's very lucky to have you for sure. And I bet a lot of people are taking notes during that one. Who doesn't want a low maintenance garden? It just makes your life a little easier. Thank you for that.